Last time I was working on the Easy 3D X1 3D printer to install Clipper on this 3D printer. You know, just for fun, as a little project, see how far we can push the boundaries with this 3D printer. Last time I did everything that was possible to install Clipper on the Melsi ET4000 V2 board. But I was missing something, a bootloader. Let's uh, let's try to install that and let's see how far we can come in this video. So let's get into it. Yes, 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 it's working. Ha ha, ha ha. For programming or, you know, flashing a bootloader onto a board, I used in this video, I use a tiny ISP programmer that is going to be inserted right onto the six pins on the board. So if you don't have it, try to order it somewhere. If you have an Arduino laying around, you can also use something like that, but it will get a little bit harder because there are some wires that needs to jump from the Arduino to the Melzi board. Do yourself a favor, order something like that. Those are not so expensive. Also in the future, if you are going to do some, uh, some control board uh, flashing or stuff like that, you will have it. And I ordered it several years ago and I could use it now as well. Hey, how awesome is that? With the Clipper Elf hex file, what do I need to do here? Here, the first thing it says bootloaders. So this documentation provides information on common bootloaders found on the microcontrollers that Clipper supports. Bootloader is a third party software that runs on the microcontroller when it is first powered on. It is typically used to flash the new application, e.g. Clipper, to the microcontroller without requiring specialized hardware. Fortunately, there is no industry-wide standard for flashing microcontrollers, nor is there a standard bootloader that works across all microcontrollers. Worse, it is common for each bootloader to require a different set of steps to flash an application. If one can flash a bootloader to a microcontroller, then one can generally also use that mechanism to flash the, an application. But care should be taken when doing this, as one may inadvertently remove the bootloader. In contrast, a bootloader will generally only permit a user to flash an application. It is therefore recommended to use a bootloader to flash an application where possible. So in general, our Arduino project is a good reference for bootloaders and flashing procedures on a 8-bit Atmel Atmega microcontrollers, in particular boards.txt file. To flash a bootloader itself, the AVR chips require a, an external hardware flashing tool which communicates with the chip using the SPI. This tool can be purchased, for example, do a web search for AVR ISP, Arduino ISP or Tiny USB Tiny ISP. It is also possible to use another Arduino or Raspberry Pi to flash the AVR bootloader. For example, do a web search for program an AVR using Raspberry Pi. The examples below are written assuming the AVR ESP MK2 device is in use. The e AVR dude, hey dude, <laughs> program is the most, co most common tool used to flash at mega chips, bootloader flashing and application flashing. There are a lot of things that I need to do in order to get this working. Yeah, I know. I mean, if you are looking to it, I have put a custom firmware on the other board where I have the display connected to. The buttons are working. I can heat up the printer. I can home. I can do whatever I want. It is working. So I have done it before. At Mega 1284P, I tried to do this. Here's Sanguino. This is this is something that I need to do. So that is to flash. And I think on the clipper.elf.hex file, it is the bootloader and the clipper firmware combined. If I put the file onto the micro SD card, put it in the card slot from the controller board and booting it up, I'm not really sure if it is going to load into the board. 
this goes into my computer somewhere and this is a six pin out so i fear the isp so that goes on there we are getting somewhere so how the file from the raspberry pi is getting on there i don't know maybe i should put this in the raspberry pi putting this on the port and using that instead am i close did i just said something that maybe was the idea because the file sits in the raspberry pi so if i'm using this putting it and there that makes total sense there are some things mentioned here so i need to type that in because i'm not working with a terminal copied to clipboard so now i'm going to look very fancy we get https and then this now we are going to type in several commands that are going to be long and annoying so we press enter something says here that it is wrong so this this isn't right the other dude done so somewhere here oh i see the mistake if that is not the correct address for the board then i should change this into serial slash by id slash and then the address from my usb which should make total sense right then that should be usb 1 a 86 underscore usb underscore serial if zero zero port zero and this should be the place from my board so now i did enter and now it is doing something timeout it is doing something i see that he he is busy he's trying to do something i'm not really sure if i can maybe i should connect the uh, programmer and see what it does so let's let's see how this is going to work i'm, I'm very curious oh wait 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 i i am i am so stupid then one is where the red line is dude serious you are so dumb okay we we are getting there so now i gave in the same thing this is the for the usb i'm going to run it again you can open the device we are so close if just just say, just say it like this if i can get this to work we are so close to getting it to nail it because once this is programmed clipper is on the board i mean it sounds like a fairy tale so we are going to try the bow trade instead of one one it's five seven six zero zero yeah so this is a different You are kidding me! You are seeing this? Did I just flash my board? No way. Now what? <laughs> okay, so machine printer for the X, for the Y, set maximum temperature 240. Heat heater bed doesn't have that. So save and restart. Make sure you include the main cell config in your printer config file. Yes. We are getting there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. That was that. Yes. 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 It's working. Ha ha. Ha ha.
I nailed it. <laughs> so now we can uh, remove everything. But the question is, if I say like 150, does it do that? It's heating up. That fan is also working. This is so freaking amazing. I mean, I, I need, still need to, uh, you know, get the screws in. Be careful not be drilling with the screws. It is going well. Of course, we want to test it out, right? So uh, we are going to see what happens if we are going to home the axis. And stop X still triggered after retract. Ah. So this one turns the other way. That means in the in the config file, I need to change something. This one goes that direction if it wants to home. Save and restart. The pin PD6 must have the same polarity. Direction pin. So I need to change the direction. Triggered, triggered, triggered. Okay. So there are a lot of still a lot of things that I need to configure. But the th basic thing is the controller board or the Raspberry Pi is now communicating with the controller board. Now the, you know, whole thing starts. I'm going to continue with it and finding the solution and then eventually move on. Those small tweaked settings. Once I have these, this printer.config file fully configured and it is working, of course, I'm going to put it on a GitHub site so that everybody is able to use it on this printer because basically what i want to see is like can i use the boards from the easy 3d for you know using clipper and what do i need to do with it so it is going to be fun it is going to be amazing and um, everybody thank you so much for watching see you next time everybody thanks so much for watching and i will see you next time peace bye bye